What's up, y'all? This is Chitty Bang, and I'm on the Renegade Millionaire Show, the podcast that profiles entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs. Join us as we go one-on-one inside the hearts and minds of some of our generation's best and brightest. And now, introducing your host, my friend, Sun Group Wealth Partners Managing Director, CNBC and Forbes.com contributor, Winnie Sun. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So excited to have you join us today. We are coming to you here from beautiful Southern California in the middle of the summer. If you haven't been here in the summer, you must join us. I mean, everything is gorgeous. The skies are blue, the beaches are crystal clear, and yeah, traffic is a little yucky. But otherwise, what's new? This is LA. We are coming to you from TuneIn Studios here in Venice Beach. Uh, This is Winnie Sun, your host of the Renegade Millionaire your show. Really excited to have you here. As you know, I'm financial advisor, managing director of Sun Group Wealth Partners, located here in Southern California. If you have any questions pertaining to your own portfolio, all you have to do is reach out. But I really want to invite you to follow me on Twitter, and that's at Sun Group WP, and that's where I'm going to let you know next time I'm on, I'm on CNBC, Forbes, and all that good stuff. Today, I'm super excited about who's joining me, uh, a really good friend. But before I go into there, I thought you might find it interesting. I certainly did. And actually, I've invited Uh, Susie Day, my content producer, to join us on the show today. And she shared with me that, did you know that in this world, the women's wear industry has passed $621 billion in business in 2014. That's one big number. And uh, according to sources, working as an independent fashion designer requires incredibly long hours and a lot of patience. Patience that you might say comes from parenting. I don't know, perhaps. And that's kind of a fun segue to our guest. But without further ado, I wanted to introduce you to our good friend and CEO, founder, and genius behind a company called MK Collab, our friend Marissa Kenson. Marissa, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And you're right. It's uh, We live in paradise don't here we? in downtown Santa Monica, don't we? Yeah. And how was traffic getting here from beautiful San Juan Capistrano, where you live? I don't think I should uh, talk about that. <laughs> yeah, we, I have patience for a lot of things. Traffic is not one of them. <laughs> I know. That that's makes not, three of us, I yeah, think. <laughs> that's true, Susie, right? Mm-hmm. That, and Susie came in all the way from downtown San Diego. So welcome, Susie, to the Thank show. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm so excited, excited to be just, here, too. I'm so excited to see you again, yeah, my I dear mean, friends. I know you're now, Susie, first time in front of the mic. Mm. Yeah. So well, I think we're going to have a great girl chat today. I think so. And with that, all of you, I hope that you will bear with me. I wanted to give you a little bit of a bio or background on Marissa because Marissa's been extremely successful in her career, but she's kind of been a behind the scenes type of um, entrepreneur, I would say. So she grew up in Southeast Asia and lived in the Rangoon region with her father, a banker, and her mother, who was a teacher. Now, that's a, that's a really Nice combination there. She had a really special bond with her grandmother, and she often sat on the side and wanted to design and hem custom clothing for women in the village. And she started designing clothes for herself and her sisters when she was only in seventh grade. Now, that's a big deal. And so she went on to go to school with, well, I guess, I guess it, from what I see, it was partly vanity because she wanted to go to school with new clothes every day. Well, that's, that's like, understandable, right? Right. And we had seven kids in our family, so I had to, you know, do something about it to, myself. To look good. I know. And if you, if you ever, I really want to. If you're listening, you should actually go ahead and log on to MK Collab's website right now because you want to take a look at Marissa. Marissa is, Marissa is nothing short of a bombshell beautiful. She's blonde. She looks. We were just joking when she came in that if you've met her four children and what eight grandchildren. Four, yes. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a little illegal <laughs> what her family has accomplished because they pretty much they pretty much stole all the beauty gene pools. That's <laughs> no, not true. Thank you. <laughs> it's it <is> true, <laughs> though. It's so sweet. I mean, they could have a <laughs> they could have an Orange County show just with their own family. They're such so, <laughs> so good looking. 
Well, sometimes it works for you and sometimes it doesn't. But yes, they're all beautiful children like yours. You're gorgeous <laughs> well, I babies. Didn't, I don't know about that, but 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 thank you. I you appreciate You know what's that. different about them? And everyone always says there's something different. And that's because they're half Asian and half European. Really? And, mm-hmm, they're, you know, Asian and Italian and Asian and Norwegian. So it must. It you guys have well. some mm-hmm. great food at your house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We 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 do, and the restaurants are open. <laughs> <laughs> I love one it. Thing I can't do. <laughs> so Marissa, and so 2008 was a really big year for you. And actually, uh, part of the reason we invited Susie to be on the show with us today is for a number of reasons. But also, uh, Susie and Marissa had the opportunity to work and collaborate together for uh, for uh, for a couple of years, and so they know each other like sisters. So. I think I'm going to take a step back here, Susie, and kind of let you dig in for 2008 and share with our guests uh, the significance of that year with Marissa. Well, I think what a lot of listeners would love to hear is even before 2008, you know, how your background, because I think so many, especially girls, young girls, think about wanting to become a fashion designer and what that looks like. And it's not always glamorous. And I think you um, really paid your dues. And so I think to tell your story of kind of how you started and how that led to your big break um, and what that meant to you, it would be really helpful for those out there listening that might want to get into the field. Well, you know, I do love talking about mentoring and uh, about the the fashion um, journey that I've been on because I, I want to dispel the fallacy. You know, there is a business behind fashion. That's and if definitely. it's not, you know, down that path, it's just a hobby. Mm-hmm. So I, I tell most interns and, you know, young people that want to be a fashion designer just like I wanted to be. And I had all the dreams and aspirations um, – uh, of what I thought it was and then what it actually is and what I had to do to survive. And I do like talking about it because I want to share it. You can make it if you have the right perspective. So maybe you could share with us. I mean, so starting from working with grandma and creating mm-hmm. fashions for yourself, a lot of kids, I imagine, um, had that similar dream, but not a lot of people have accomplished what you've accomplished. So, you know, you had an extremely successful career. Let's talk about um, when you, you launched your brand, you were working with some of the absolute best. I mean, you have a knack for fashion, fabric, but like you said, it's run like a business. Let's talk about that a little bit. So you worked with, I know, some brands like Walmart, Target. Um, what did you do? Right. Well, it's called uh, private label. Mm-hmm. So when you're working with the largest retailers in the world and you go in and you see, you know, the product in Express or the limited corporation, Walmart, Target, most of the brands that they carry in their stores are owned by the retailer. Okay. But they <clears throat> depend on manufacturers to design it, develop it, to sell it to them, ship it, produce it, bill it. So basically we do everything Aside from the fact that we have our own label in it. Interesting. And there's some good good things about it. And, you know, obviously there's some pros and cons. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And can you give us a glimpse just how much volume we're talking about? Because I know when you are doing private label business, you are moving a lot of pieces. Give us an idea. Like I had heard um, from Susie, like a pair of jeans, like the volume that we're talking about. How many pairs of jeans were you selling? Well, you know, you have to think about it from the capacity that you're not um, a boutique department store. Mm -hmm. You're working with um, retailers that are servicing and dressing Mass America. And there has to be a significant uh, focus on price point, um, on the type of product that they would wear and buy. And so you're looking at the largest categories of products, you know, like T-shirts and jeans that that everybody can wear at mm-hmm. the price point that everybody could afford. So mm-hmm. you're looking at, you know, telephone book numbers um, in terms of orders, uh, you know, can in, could be anywhere from 200,000 to a million pieces of one style. That's incredible. And that's what they buy. And, yeah. You know. Um, and you handled, I mean, th- these were the numbers that you were working with. They're crazy numbers. Yes. And Not very many people have done what you've done, Marissa. Well, you know, I was um, in in such a place at s- such a time way back when, 
And uh, I, like many new designers who who want to have the, to who have the romantic version of designing, you know, couture um, items that no one's ever seen before <laughs> because no one's ever wanted to buy it before. That's right. But, um, you know, my my career early on took a very hard reality check to the right, and it just so happened I had two very young children at the time, and um, my focus was on making money. So I was not happy about where I landed, but um, in a very few short years, I realized how fortunate I was um, to be able to be in that position. That's incredible. And so let's talk about, let's segue a little bit because I'm I'm interested to learn. You've worked with some really big celebrity greats like Katy Perry and maybe some of the, all these names we've heard of, you know, Cheryl Burke and like Vicky from the Housewives, Orange County Housewives. And you have uh, a whole line of very loyal celebrity fan base. So obviously they didn't, they weren't shopping at Walmart and Target. So, um, (laughs) How did you come about to work with them? Well, I realized after a very long time, you know, when you're in an industry just much like yours um, and you've been in it for a long time, you're able to see the evolution of that particular industry. And you know that there's changes are coming and must happen and things change in the world that we have to um, kind of, you know, be flexible and change as an industry. So the industry became very dysfunctional. Um, at, at one point in time, these very large retailers that uh, gave us these huge orders started to become our competitors. Mm. And I realized that, you know, all the uh, great product that had been manufacturing and designing for years, I had no annuity. I had no um, right. equity in it. And I'm speaking financial terms, but right. you know what I mean? Very because <laughs> my, um, my, my, my body of work could not be recognized. And um, so I, I realized, you know, I need to come up with my own brand and right. I need to start to capitalize on all this experience I had. You need to put a stamp on it so they knew that the clothes actually were designed by you, right? Yes. So then you started working with some very high level, or you went a different direction, right? You went high end. I, I did um, because when you are launching a new product line, you have to have some sort of value proposition and you have to uh, be able to get it promoted in a nanosecond out to the world. And right. I just happened to have some really amazing friends who knew celebrities and um, always loved, you know, my custom clothing, et cetera. And it actually had happened organically. So I did a couple things that were very different. I w- we were the first one that put a lot of, uh, first brand rather, that put a lot of the, the hardware and jewelry actually on um, a garment. Mm-hmm. And um, so that gave us um, a little bit of a, a differentiating a differential factor for them to love the garments. And we also came up with a with a uh, concept called the invisible belt. Right, that's brilliant. And that came out of my um, love to dress women of every size and shape. And make them look good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And make them look good, yes, because I really believe that no matter, you know, what size, shape, or age you're at, you, every woman deserves to feel beautiful and understand what it's like because – you know, when we wear clothes, we're actually wearing confidence, right? Right. I feel like I'm selling Always. confidence. Mm-hmm. I'm selling a renewal. <laughs> sells confidence, for sure. <laughs> and it, it should be available to everybody. But when the celebrities started wearing it, you know, that's when we got a lot of press and I finally came out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> Which you should have a long time ago. Well, I think what you were so brilliant at, too, and this is before really social media became what it is now, is you – you kind of took the marketing end of really getting your product in the right hands and getting it photographed and all of that before you really even put it into the stores. So you did the marketing ahead of really launching your brand, which was brilliant at the you time. You did social media before, before it, was it was called social media. Social media. Right. I did. <laughs> right. I did. And, you know, that just comes from knowing the business of fashion. I knew how difficult it, it was to launch a brand just from a standpoint of manufacturing some goods, showing it to a buyer, leaving it in the buyer's hand. My um, my 
my direction for my new company was to connect directly with the consumer um, and not leave it into the hands of a buyer or a retailer who has many other decisions that they make. It's not always the best product that wins. Yeah, because I mean, you, even I mean, even segueing back, I mean, you were working with brands like Joe Boxer, Cherokee, Kathy Ireland, Lane Bryant, Disney, Coles. I mean, you've worked with pretty much everybody, and then you designed this invisible belt dress, which I kind of want to talk about because I think it's really brilliant, and I, I think you can definitely explain it to people because the first time I met you and, ex- and you came in an invisible belt dress, I like. This lady is genius. She's like techie, <laughs> but designer. Because, right? That's really it. Because the dress, okay, ladies, if you haven't tried this dress and you have, like, every, all of us have issues, this dress literally fix all your issues. It's like the inspector gadget dress. <laughs> yeah, it really. It hides everything that you want to hide and and, it keeps, and obviously enhances everything that you want to enhance. I well, know. It sounds like a miracle drug or something, it doesn't is, it? It does. <laughs> what it does... Those of you who are women who are listening, it's really neat. Like the front that where they built it, it keeps it close so you don't look all saggy. But in the back, she's so brilliant because obviously we don't want anything tight in back. And her dress makes it so that it's not tight in back. It just kind of creeps. Right? And, and what's really amazing about it is it's really the application of the belt because it can be put in a dress. It can be put in a long dress. It can be put in a blouse. Um, we have so many applications. So basically the belt is next to your body in the back. And then it has, you know, like a um, belt loop or, or uh, belt holes belt. that come come from the side. Yeah. So in the front, it sort of cinches you in under the breast and makes your waist look, you know, longer and, or, or tinier. Right. And um, so you can shape and, you know, it's flattering and forgiving at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's great because you can you've made it in so many different styles, so women can choose their colors and styles and their dress. Yes, right? it, it's in denim, it's in you know silk, it's in wow. celebrity versions, it's in all different. And things. you took so, it on Home Shopping Network, and it was like a complete sellout. So it was brilliant, a really how brilliant. How many products did you I, sell on the Home Shopping Network? I of this invisible belt dress. Wow, that was a couple years back, but I we did sell out on a black version before we were even off the the air. So wow, I know that we that's did crazy. really well. So, like, do you have a patent on this? I have a patent pending on it. Okay, so in apparel, it's almost it. it's almost it's so difficult because things change so fast. But the rules are changing, and you know we need to go out there and we need to. Um, uh, make sure that our intellectual property and the things that we come up with are protected. Of course. Your Inspector Gadget dress is pretty brilliant. <laughs> so those of you who are listening are th- probably wondering, so where can you get your hands on that? And that's kind of going to be our next segue. So, Marissa, what are you working on now? Well, you know, this has been um, – I, I worked on solving a problem, and it's called the the, – the, the, the result is the MK Collab, which is um, – what I really I like know- the name, MK Collab. Well, it's it's a collaborative. I believe in collaborations. I believe that people can come together and pool what they do best for the benefit of each other. If anyone professes to do anything by themselves, especially when you're in business, there's so many different types of individuals that have to come together to make a business work. You mm-hmm. know, you need financial advisors. You need great marketing people. And if you pull together, you can make it happen. So mm-hmm. I decided to call it the MK Collab because in this case, the MK Collab collaborates with the consumer. So going, you know, fast forward, we took the the power away from the retailers and we put them in the hands of the consumers. So we've made our consumers our partners. I know. I, I guess they have, they're called stylists, right? They're called stylists, yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And then, um, I mean, in addition to beautiful clothing, what I love about the site, as many people ask me all the time, is jewelry. So I don't know. If you're a jewelry nut like myself, but those of you who are, you've got to take a look at this. In fact, I have a piece on today. I got to show you. I love that on you. You need to get some more. Mm -hmm. I I have no problem with that. (laughs) Winnie loves her long necklaces. I love my necklaces. And the people, I guess I'm known for it because every time I'm in the air, somebody asks me. And I got to tell you my little secret. I get a lot of it from Marissa. Um, But what I find really interesting, too, I love how you name all your pieces. And I just found out all your pieces are named after... 
girl names. Yes, they are. Right? Yes, the clothing. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, that was another collaboration that I did with Susie. Susie is a jewelry designer, and we came together, and she really helped me, um, you know, from her perspective of, because she's been in jewelry business before, and she um, really gave me a really amazing education on um you know, how things are worn, what are the best sellers, et cetera. So we really collaborated on that. And it works well. A lot of the things that, you know, Susie uh, helped design oh, and put out really there. This is really pretty. Yeah, this is new. That's gorgeous. Um, it's still on the site. You okay. guys have to go to the site. Trust me. The I jewelry need to, and the clothes. I need to get and this. Marissa, I think something that's really important is the, the price point on the clothes is so reasonable. And you can enjoy these amazing clothes and start your business at the same time. Let's it's talk pretty about that. incredible opportunity for people. Yeah, I'm interested to learn more about that because so like walk me through this so I get a visual. So like let's say for example, I am a stay at home mom. And I love clothing. Obviously, a lot of us love clothing. And I say, wow, you know, this is great. I can buy clothes off the site, like a lot of us do. And it gets shipped to my house. And I can try it on. And I go hang out at the park with my other friends. And other moms say, wow, Winnie, where did you get that from? And I have, I'm a stylist, right, technically, at their site. So how does this work exactly? Well, it's very simple, and we kept it that way. So basically, when I said we've made our customers our partners, you know, how many times your your, your mom friends are asking you, where did you get that, Winnie? Women tend time. to do that. Mm -hmm. So you probably send them to Nordstrom. Saks, Nordstrom's, you know, BCG. Nordstrom Rack. <laughs> yeah. And so when you think about it, do any of those stores give you rewards for referrals? No. 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 So what we decided is that why not – reward our consumers. They are our best salespeople. So what we did is not, we did it one step better. It's not just a reward program. We put you in business. So you have your own e-boutique if you buy a certain amount of product, because that's a trigger. It's a financial model. And now you can tell your friends when they are admiring what you're wearing, go to my site. And that just you know, makes me so happy because it took me 25 years to have my own <laughs> website. So, when, you, know, you know, to be able to give it to women just for a shopping spree of anything they want to buy that's um, $499, we have now the capability to give you your own website. And that's not a corporate site with where you find your name. I know some companies do that, but this is your own URL. So it would be, you know, Shop Winnie. MK Collab, shopwinnie.com. And so I, I know you have like a lot of celebrities doing this. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're going to um, meet some of these fun celebrities, but let's talk about that. Me, so maybe you could talk about, um, I know you have a very good friendship with Vicky. Yes. And maybe you could talk about um, what you've done for her. Well, you know, we've given not only consumers, but celebrities and people that are influential uh, an ability to monetize it consistently. Um, monetize their influence. So, you know, just to give you an example of how this happened and why it happened is, it, you know, back to Katy Perry and all the celebrities I used to dress and uh, still dress, even with Vicky, what I originally did with her. I was the first stylist on, on the, Honey, first, the first episode ever when none of us knew what we were doing. It was uh, just behind the gates and shot with the eight millimeter camera. And so they asked me to come style these women. So they would wear it, right? And they would um, wear it on the show. I would get a little pub pub publicity, publicity, <laughs> and then in turn they would get a free outfit, and it worked for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now we have given them an opportunity to monetize it 365 days of the year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week by giving them their site. That so, makes sense because they're on the show. I mean, Instagram's kind of done this with this new tech where like if you see, for example, Vicky on The Housewives, she's wearing such and such dress. So in the in the past, as a, a viewer, we'd be like, wow, that's a beautiful dress. I wonder where she got it from. You would try to search black and white dress and it'd be difficult to find. But now she has her own store. So if you wanted the Vicky dress or the Vicky look, you could just go to her store. She would be able to earn um, some residuals on that. Right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and and you know um, when you go on this, if 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 she has a fan that loves the dress that's on the show or in you know a picture, 
not only does she go to this to Vicky's site and uh, which is MK Collab Shop Vicky.com, but she'll also find 450 other different designs of jewelry and apparel that they can purchase. So now Vicky is really truly in business and uh, able to monetize her celebrity. I love it. Well, let me ask you this. So let's say, for example, a celebrity doesn't necessarily obviously need the income. Could they in turn take that and donate it to a charity of their choice? Sure, absolutely. And I we have several celebrities that are doing that. But we also um, have set up a sa- similar situation directly for a charity. And what we do with charities is that they we give them a site, and it's a way for their supporters to purchase products from them, and they get 30%. That's incredible. Off the top. So we have charities that have their own site. We have uh, the Marconi Foundation. We have um, C- Katerina's Club, which is um, a little charity in Anaheim that feeds all the motel kids. And so now all these amazing women, Aww. we're not changing their buying habits, right? We're changing the venue. We're saying, yeah, I have to shop at Nordstrom's. You can shop at Katarina's.com because every time you shop there, we give them 30%. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I think that's so brilliant because I attended this event um, in L.A. at the Santa Monica Hangar for the Ovaria Cancer Society. I thought it was the most brilliant charity event I had ever attended. It was like the biggest shopping event. And you're right. If you ask a donor to shop for charity, there's no issue there. They feel very good about doing it because they're shopping for a a greater good. And as myself included, I feel really good going out there because it, it, it gives me something fun to do. I love to shop anyway, but then I'm giving to people in need. What a beautiful thing. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. I am Wonderful. I'm just so glad. I mean, I've always loved Marissa as a friend. I mean, to be completely honest with you, I haven't known as much the behind the scenes. So I find this conversation so fascinating. <laughs> but um, what what I have I've always admired you for, Marissa, is being an incredible mother and grandmother. Mm-hmm. And she's, you know, she has what all of us parents just uh, hope that we can accomplish, meaning that she's built this incredible business and she's surrounded by her family. Mm-hmm. Her family is extremely supportive and involved in her business. I mean, it doesn't hurt that her children look like supermodels, so they obviously <laughs> would would yeah, naturally make so. beautiful models for her clothing, um, but it's a gift, right? You know, I, um, I so appreciate that, and at the end of the day, nobody's life is perfect, and it, it having children, I, I want to let everyone know, having children and a business and being married, it's all a lot of work. But, you know, what I always tell women is don't keep score daily Mm -hmm. because every day I have to say I'm probably screwing up in one of one of my areas. I'm either a bad friend, a bad wife, a bad mother. (laughs) But, you know, you just you just continue to try and you continue to um, to um, put the best effort out with a good heart and with integrity and your kids learn. From that, from your example, mm-hmm. well, absolutely. You're a great example mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. You're a great example of being an incredible, incredible mother and grandparent. That that means so much coming from you, both of you. Thank well, you. That that's mm-hmm. huge. You should be Thank so you. proud because um, I know your children and just how much they respect you, mm-hmm. adore you but truly look up to you. So that's that's a gift. Well, on that note, I'm so excited. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation as much as awesome. I did. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, a huge thank you, Marissa, for making the trek over to the studio today because I have been looking forward to sitting down with you for some time, and you look amazing. Oh, my gosh. And, thank you. And if you want to look like Marissa, you've got to go to <laughs> www.mkcollab.com. We were going to get to that, Susie. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. But thank you. I for love you, okay. Susie. <laughs> but always the salesperson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Always, always brilliant, Susie. So thank you. This is Winnie Sun. Thanks for tuning in again to the Renegade Millionaire Show. And um, we invite you to absolutely check out Marissa Kenson's amazing design pieces at mkcollab.com. That's M K C O L L A B. 
winniesun.com. And to learn more about me, you can follow me at winniesun.com. That's W-I-N-N-I-E-S-U-N.com. And Twitter, I'm at sungroupw. P. And I know, Marissa, you are all over social as well. So maybe you could share with our listeners all your social media handles. I know you're really big on Instagram. Yes, we have um, on Instagram, it's at MK Collab and at Marissa Kenson. Um, we have a Facebook page, but everyone seems to always come on my personal Facebook, so it's not now public, <laughs> which is Marissa Kenson. And um, we do have a Twitter, which is also Marissa Kenson Collections. Perfect, perfect. Well, with that, thank, thank you for having me. Thank you I'm so much for happy coming. shopping. <laughs> happy shopping, my beautiful friends out there. And with that, thank you so much. We hope you'll tune in next time. We'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs>